Welcome. Welcome to uh, Suits and Spooks New York. The, the reason why I organized Suits and Spooks was because w from the time that I left Microsoft uh, in March of 2009 to the time that I started the first Suits and Spooks conference in September of, of 2011, I must have spoken at 100 conferences. And, and while it was exciting in the beginning, and I, I, was, I was thinking that this could actually make a difference, I quickly learned that speaking at conferences really uh, is a sort of a, an illusion of, of making a difference. Um, and that it eventually began to really frustrate me because, uh, like many people, I was seeing uh, a lot of, of transformative events occurring which need to change the way that we interact with the world, and yet a lot of these conferences were not addressing those issues. Um, and at the time, I felt like there was a serious disconnect between uh, the private sector and the intelligence community, and that they could learn from each other. So that was the genesis of this event. The, um, the biggest mistake that I see being made today, uh, not only by people on, in government, but by people in the private sector, uh, including C-level executives, is the, the idea that they can somehow control what hits their network, that they can control their supply chain, that they can control groups like um, uh, non-state actors who could pop up and disappear at a moment's notice. The illusion of control uh, is still very prevalent, especially in, in government and, and uh, the military. Um, it's, it's endlessly frustrating because it's impossible. It's, it's literally impossible today with the reliance that we have on a digital environment to exert control over every area of, of a threat landscape. Uh, the, the goal for today, and actually at every Suits and Spooks event, is not to uh, encourage your ability to control your environment, but to encourage or to inspire innovative thinking. Um, this has to be, in, in, in my opinion, it has to be a continual process of questioning our assumptions because the, the digital landscape that we live in today is constantly evolving and to assume that it's simply bits and bytes or to assume that it's simply logical networks and that's it is, is a huge mistake. Um, it, it, it's so much more than that. And especially you can see that if you have children. Um, they literally are, have become sort of an organic part of a digital environment. And as they grow up, so will the environments that they create in companies and in their social networks and so on. So innovative thinking has to be a process. And, uh, and I, you know, we, we, I think we all see this every day, the difference between control and, and aspiring to something that is innovative. We especially we see it in the world of surveillance. I, I think it's um, perfectly logical to assume that if an intelligence agency had access to all the data being generated all the time worldwide, then all they've got to do is figure out a way to mine it. I mean, that's a logical assumption, but the implementation of that is, uh, you know, kind of horrendous. And uh, that's not to say that um, it, it, it can't be done, it, but we need to sort of re-examine on a regular basis better in better ways to to, to access, uh, analyze, and uh, determine uh, what our threat landscape looks like at any given moment. Again, this hopefully will be done through challenge uh, and discussion and in the inspiration of innovative thinking. And that's why I'm going to start referring to Suits and Spooks as a, not as a, so much as a conference, but as a collision. Uh, and I have to give credit for the term to O'Reilly Media. Uh, and to, to Jim, uh, Jim Stodgill from O'Reilly, who is a friend, and uh, I was, I always hated the word conference because I have such bad associations with it, but I, and, and because what we do is really so different from a normal conference. And I love the word collision, because uh, that's really what happens, and that's what I, I hope will happen today and tomorrow and at every event. Um, our speakers, all of our speakers uh, will be asked to, uh, um, you know, make a short presentation of their um, 
of, of, of their bullet points or what they have to say. It might, if it's in a panel, it might be 10, 15 minutes. If they're actually speaking, it might be 20, 20 minutes or more. But as the attendees, I encourage you to give them at least 10 minutes to make a point. If beyond that, if you hear something uh, that you question or that you believe is, uh, you know, you need to, to challenge, then go ahead and feel free to do that. So just raise your hand and jump in. Uh, so they've get, you got a 10-minute window, speakers. <laughs> After that, you're sort of, it's open game for, the, for you all to, to jump in and address it. And uh, we try to do this for, with, every, uh, with every speaker on the agenda. And I think, oh, last thing, very important, I want to thank uh, our sponsors. We can't really do these events without sponsorships. And for New York, we had a great, uh, great participation among our sponsors, the biggest ever. Uh, of, of, of the seven conferences that I've held. So Looking Glass Cyber Solutions, uh, Kaspersky Labs, ESET, Basis Technology, uh, Fortinet, Recorded Future, uh, O'Reilly Media, and George Washington University are all sponsors today. Thank you very much. Most, most if not all, will have materials set up on one of these two tables. Uh, please take a look at their offering. Uh, and with that, I'd like to uh, introduce our first speaker.